Okay, this is going to be a video, a quick video, with just one example of curve sketching from calculus. And we're going to use this function, f of x is equal to x to the third plus 3x squared, to do this example. Um, we're going to gather all the following information to do this curve sketching, okay? So I'm going to ask for the y-intercept. I'm going to ask for intervals where the function is increasing, the intervals where the function is decreasing, if, if it is the intervals where the function is concave up, the intervals where the function is concave down, um, the special points such as a relative min or a relative maximum, and then a point of inflection or points of inflection if there are any. So these are all special points and these are special intervals that will help us roughly sketch this graph. So again, Increasing and decreasing, we're going to determine from the first derivative test. Concave up, concave down, intervals of concavity come from the second derivative. Relative min and relative max, we're going to use the first derivative test in this case to find those points. And points of inflection or inflection points also come from the second derivative. Okay, so the first part of this, let's find the y-intercept because that's just basic algebra. A y-intercept is a point where the x-coordinate is 0. So if I want a y-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for x. And when I do that, 0 to the third plus 3 times 0 squared, I get 0. So this y-intercept just happens to be the origin. Okay, That doesn't always happen, it's just for this case. Now let's, going in, now let's go into these intervals and these special points. So to find intervals of increasing and decreasing, we're going to need the first derivative. It comes from the first derivative test. And the first derivative is 3x squared plus 6x. And what we do is we need to find what we call the critical values. And those are the numbers where the first derivative is equal to 0 for this example. Now this is a quadratic equation which hopefully factors. And it does because I have a GCF. I could take out a 3x and then I'm left with an x plus 2. If it did not factor, I'd have to use the quadratic formula. And then I'm going to set each of these pieces equal to 0. My first critical value is 0. x plus 2 is equal to 0. Subtract 2, subtract 2, and I get x is negative 2. So I have two critical values. Okay. Once I find the critical values, I stick them on a f prime number line from least to greatest. Okay. This is all the part of the first derivative test. Now, this interval here to the left of negative 2, I need a number to represent this interval. So let's pick an easy one, negative 3. I also need between negative 2 and 0, so let's pick a number there, negative 1. And then greater than 0 in this interval, pick an easy number, 1. Now, because this is an f prime number line, we're going to plug these test numbers into the first derivative. And once we do that, we're going to throw them away after. We just want to know what's happening in this interval. Is it positive? Is it negative for the first derivative? So I just want the sign when I plug negative 3 into the first derivative. Now I could plug it into this one that's unfactored, or I can plug it into the factored case. I personally like to plug it into the factored case because it's faster. I only care about the sign when I plug it into the first derivative, not the numerical value. So when I plug negative 3 up here into the factored case, I get 3 times negative 3, which is negative. And when I plug negative 3 here, I'm going to get negative 3 plus 2, which is also negative. So when I plug numbers in this interval into the first derivative, I'm going to get a negative times a negative, which is positive. And when the first derivative is positive, we are increasing along that interval. Let's do the same thing with this number, negative 1. Plugging negative 1 into the factored case, I'm going to get negative 1 plugged here. I'm going to get a negative numerical value. Plugging negative 1 in here, negative 1 plus 2, I'm going to get a positive number. So if I'm multiplying a negative number times a positive number, I'm going to get a negative outcome. And all these numbers in this interval give us negative first derivatives, which means I'm decreasing along that interval. Now we're going to test positive 1. Positive 1 when I plug in here is going to give me a positive outcome. Positive 1 when I plug it in here is going to give me a positive outcome. 
when I multiply a positive number times a positive number, I get a positive overall outcome. And in this interval, my first derivative is positive, and therefore the function is increasing. Now, these don't always have to alternate like this. This is just a nice example to see a nice, clear um, curve sketching problem. But let's go input this that we just determined onto our list of things here. So let's find first where the function is increasing. So it starts to increase from negative infinity, right, until we reach negative 2. These are the numbers that are going into your increasing and decreasing intervals. These are out. I don't care about the test points anymore. So from negative infinity to negative 2, my function is increasing. That's the first part of my interval. So from negative infinity until negative 2. But there is another interval where I'm increasing. So also from 0 to positive infinity, right? I'm increasing along this interval starting at 0 to positive infinity. So and 0 to positive infinity. Here is my interval of increasing. Decreasing. Whatever's left basically. From negative 2 to positive 0, well to 0, my function is going down or decreasing from negative 2 to 0. So in interval notation we write negative 2, oops, we write, oh crap, Ola. <laughs> let me rewrite this again. Negative infinity to negative 2 and 0 to infinity. For decreasing, we're going to go from negative 2 to 0. Okay? These are my intervals of increasing and decreasing. Now, if I know my intervals where my function is increasing and decreasing, I could determine where I have a relative max or relative min. So, if you look over here, notice that I increase and I'm going up until I reach negative 2, and then my function starts to go down. It creates a high point or a hill which means that at negative 2 I have a relative max. So at the x-coordinate negative 2, let's go plug that in here, I have a relative max. Now I only have the x-coordinate, I have to find the y-coordinate. I'll find that in a second, or maybe at the end. Now these are points, right? This is a y-coordinate. These are intervals, very different. What's happening at 0? Well, my graph is decreasing, going down until it reaches zero, and then it changes to increasing. So it creates a low point or a trough, which means that I have a relative min at x is equal to zero. So let's go put that over here. This is a ordered pair. The x-coordinate zero, <clears throat> when I have the x-coordinate zero, I have a relative min. We'll find the y-coordinates later. Now let's talk about the rest of this stuff. Intervals of concavity and points of inflection. That's going to come from the second derivative. So let me rewrite the first derivative before I factored it. 3x squared plus 6x. This is going to make it easier to find the second derivative. And I need the second derivative to talk about concavity. So my second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. And the derivative of f prime in this case is 6x plus 6. And we take the second derivative and set it equal to 0 and solve for x. Minus 6, minus 6, this is 6x is equal to negative 6, so x is negative 1. A nice easy equation to solve. There's no particular um, term for this. I call them potential points of inflection, but there's no actual um, name for these guys when the second derivative is 0. I'm just going to stick it on an f double prime number line. And I call it f double prime number line because I want to determine concavity. So I'm going to pick numbers or a number to the left of negative 1 in this interval, which nice and easy, negative 2. And I'm going to pick a number to the right of negative 1, a nice easy one is 0. And I'm going to plug them into the second derivative because it's an f double prime number line. And I care about my outcome. Is it positive or is it negative? So plugging negative 2 into the second derivative here, I'm going to get a negative 12 plus 6, which overall is going to be negative. Now, when the second derivative is negative, that means that I am concave down. When I plug 0 into the second derivative, 0 plus 6, I'm going to get a positive outcome. And when the second derivative is positive, then I am concave up.
concave down, concave up. So now I know my intervals of concavity. Let's plug that into this list of things that we want. Concave up. Again, into this interval goes the numerical value down here, right? Once I use my test points, I throw them away after. They just tell me about the signs. So I'm concave up starting at negative 1 and continuing until positive infinity. So concave up from negative 1 to positive infinity. Concave down here from negative infinity until I reach negative 1. So my interval where my function is concave down from negative infinity until negative 1. Now, <clears throat> points of inflection come from the, or inflection points, second derivative, and they are points where there's a change in concavity. So there's a change in concavity. It goes from concave down to concave up at this point, which means this is a point of inflection. And it's a point. This is the value of x. So I have the x-coordinate of the point of inflection here, negative 1. Now, I have almost everything that I need to basically graph this, but I do need the y-coordinates of these points. And how do I find y-coordinates? of points, plug the x's into the original to find the y-coordinates, into the original. If I want increasing and decreasing, I'll plug into the first derivative. If I want concavity, I plug it into the second derivative. If I want y-coordinates, I plug it into the original. And the original was f of x is equal to x to the third plus 3x squared, all the way back to the top, x to the third plus 3x squared. And I need to use this to find the y-coordinate when x is 0. What else? The y-coordinate when x is negative 2. And the y-coordinate when x is negative 1. So let's plug them in. 0 is easy. 0 to the third plus 3 times 0 squared, this we did before, is 0. So when x is 0, y is 0. So I actually have a relative min at the origin, which is also the y-intercept. That does not always happen. f of negative 2. Negative 2 to the third plus 3 times negative 2 squared. Negative 2 to the third is negative 8 plus 3 times 4. Negative 8 plus 12, which is 4. So the y-coordinate when x is negative 2 is positive 4. Plug that in here, 4. Let's find the y-coordinate when x is negative 1. Negative 1 to the third plus 3 times negative 1 squared. I get negative 1 plus 3 times 1, negative 1 plus 3, or 2. So the y-coordinate when x is negative 1 is 2. And now I have all of my points. There is a, a trick to find relative mins and relative maxes on the graphing calculator and I can show you that in another um, video. Let me know if you want to see that. I'll post one of those. And then let's put all of this stuff on a graph and roughly sketch this graph now. I do have to work on <laughs> drawing straight lines. I have to admit I'm not great at that. But it's a rough sketch, right guys? Rough sketching. Now my x-coordinates are not very large, so I can count by ones. One, two on the x-axis. Two, four. Make sure you guys label everything for your instructors so they know how you're counting. This is why. My y-coordinates are not very large either, actually. So I don't need to count by very big numbers on the y-axis. So I count by one there also. Two, three, four, negative two. There's my setup. I always tell my students to plug in the point first. So 0, 0. And I always suggest that you guys write what those points are. So we're plugging in 0, 0. This is a relative min. Relative min. Relative max, negative 2, 4 up here. This is a relative max. Let's do the point of inflection at negative 1, 2. This is the p 
POI. And basically, if you start, oops, if you start with the points, then you can kind of, and you label them like this, you can kind of see how the graph is going to move. It kind of helps you with that. All right. So let's do this. If I have a relative max here, then obviously I have to be increasing to the left of it and then decreasing to the right of it to be able to reach that max. So here, I'm going up and then coming down. I shouldn't curve that so much just yet. All right? POI is a change of concavity, so the concavity should not change until I reach this point. Now, to get to a relative min, I'm going to have to go down, decrease, and then go back up. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a relative min. So I'm going to follow exactly what that says. Go down and then come up. This is, again, a rough sketch. Now, let's check that everything matches what we said here. Well, we have a y-intercept at the origin. I am increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, right? Going up from negative infinity until x reaches negative 2, and going up starting at 0 to, to positive infinity for x. I'm decreasing when x is negative 2 until x reaches 0. Concave up, right? Smiling, facing up. This is concave up, starting from negative 1 to positive infinity. Concave down or frowning from negative infinity to negative 1. See? Concave down, frowning, however you want to, facing down, however you want to look at it. My relative min is at 0, 0. This is a low point on the curve, my relative max, a hill, at negative 2, 4. And a point of inflection here, changing concavity goes from concave down to concave up. Changing concavity there. My graph verifies everything that I wrote here. And this is the rough sketch of this function, f of x is equal to x to the third plus 3x squared. I'll write that underneath. f of x is equal to x to the third plus 3x squared. This is the rough sketch of this graph. Again, my x-intercept is not accurate. That's why it's a rough sketch. If I want to determine this accurately, that's a whole other um, set of uh, steps. Or you can use the graphing calculator for that as well, and I can show you that in another video. But since this is a rough sketch, I'm not accurate on here, that's okay for now. Any questions, any problems, anything you guys want to see, let me know. Good luck. I'll do another um, example in another video. Um, if there's a particular one that you guys want to see, because there's a lot of functions out there, also including trig, let me know and I'll do one. All right. Good luck.